I've had this tent for more than a year and this review is based on sleeping in it for 69 nights in weather ranging from freezing to 47 degrees Celsius. 69 nights is probably equivalent to several years of use for most people, so I think I have a fair idea of the tent's pros and cons. Any tent design involves trade-offs, and I hope this review will assist you in deciding whether the trade-offs Allocab made will meet your needs. But first, a few tips. We've mounted these little spirit levels to the back and side of the tent to check that we parked level. If you need to park on a slope, stop with the vehicle's nose facing downhill. You can sleep quite comfortably with your feet lower than your head, but sleeping with your head lower than your feet is very uncomfortable. Being level from side to side is more important, because if you're parked on a side slope, you will roll onto your sleeping partner without intending to. In a strong wind, this rope can blow around and can be a bit distracting, but there's an easy way to avoid that. You simply hook it over the corner of the awning and then it's got nowhere to go. A bag next to the ladder is a good place to store dirty shoes you do not want inside your tent. Rooftop tents come in two basic varieties, a soft shell fold over version with a zipped canvas cover and a hard shell clamshell design. The only advantage of the fold over tent is its price and that they tend to be more spacious. But in my view this is more than offset by its disadvantages. They are not as easy to set up or put away. Struggling with a dusty canvas cover is quite a pain and in some designs you cannot leave your bedding inside. So we are fans of the clamshell design which come in either aluminium or fiberglass. The Alucab Gen 3R has the benefits of a clamshell design including that it is very quick to set up. As you can see I wasn't in a rush so if you get a move on you should be able to do it significantly quicker. It is also quite quick to take down. Nice oversized bag into which the ladder fits easily. Deploying the back awning is optional. You can leave it rolled up neatly out of the way if you do not need it. If you haven't deployed the back awning, taking down the tent is even quicker. Thank you. 
Allocab's ladder is arguably the best telescopic ladder on the market. It features nice wide treads which are angled to be horizontal when the ladder is in use. You'll be surprised what a difference this makes to the user experience, especially with bare feet. We store the ladder inside the tent, which helps a lot to save space elsewhere. Like many clamshell designs, the Alucab tent also offers the ability to put load bars on the roof of the tent. This is convenient for carrying things like max tracks. It is also possible to attach an awning directly to the tent. If you are interested in my thoughts on the Alucab 270 degree shadow awn, you can see the video I made about our current setup. This video is linked to in the description. Unfortunately, the door of the tent zips open from the top and hinges at the bottom. I've made a whole video explaining why doors zipping from the bottom and hinging at the top are better, so we'll not go into all of that now. If you are interested, there is a link above and in the description. A nice feature is that the door uses one zip to open both the midget and the canvas layer, so you only have to operate one zip to enter or exit. With some others you have to zip open the midget and the canvas separately. The window inside the door can be opened leaving the midget in place. The side awning helps a lot to keep rain out of the tent when getting in and out in rainy weather. This alleviates one of the main problems of doors hinging at the bottom. You must just remember to deploy the side awning in time. When not deployed, the side awning stores neatly out of the way. Our tent came with a, the optional drop-down table, which actually is quite convenient if you have something like coffee or something that you want to put down on the table, books for reading, etc. During our two-month trip, this mounting point failed, but that was fixed under warranty. One of the party tricks of this tent is that it comes with a backrest that you can adjust, so you just pull it up as far as you want it to go and it clicks into place. And where this comes in very nicely is if you want to sit and read in bed or drink coffee that you've got something to rest your back against. And then once you're done you just fully pull it up and it goes down again. One of the many design choices that the designer of a hard shell rooftop tent faces is where exactly to put the gas strut used to assist with opening the tent. There are basically three choices. The first choice is to put it on the outside of the hard shell. This choice maximizes interior space but leaves the strut in a position where it is quite susceptible to damage from overhanging branches etc. The second option is to put it in between the outer hard shell and the canvas layer. Here it is protected from damage and does not get in the way of the canvas folding in when you close the tent but it does take space so it does not maximize interior space for a specific outer dimension. The third choice is to put it on the inside of the canvas layer, which also works fairly well, the only problem with that being that it tends to get in the way of the canvas folding when you close the tent. Allocab chose the second option, which I do prefer to having the strut outside. The tent comes with convenient storage pockets, which is by no means a unique feature. One of the downsides of the drop-down table 
is if it's not deployed you cannot really use the lower row of pockets and even if it is if the table is deployed you can only use those pockets with, while the table is deployed so if you then fold up the table you have to take out whatever you had in those storage pockets uh, unless it's something very flat that you can leave there we find the 70 mm mattress to be quite comfortable the tent is quite well insulated with thick foam rubber insulation on the floor and in the roof double canvas sides and an additional layer of honeycomb insulation under the mattress the insulation has a downside in that it takes long for the tent to cool down after standing in the sun the internal light can be switched on and off without getting out of bed but the switch is quite hard to find and reach the generation 3R tent comes standard with a connector for a solar panel on the roof of the tent and then has two Harrison connectors underneath, uh, one for the solar panel and one for providing power to the tent. I love the fact that they use Harrison plugs, also known as Anderson plugs, and that means that you can actually leave it plugged in while driving because it's quite a secure connection. This um, connector on the canopy is not standard but they added that for me during installation and it really works a treat to just have this small flyover lead. The tent offers internal USB and cigarette lighter power points but these are in a very inconvenient and hard to reach position. They are pretty much hidden under the mattress where your head is in the sleeping position. When the back wrist is up, they become impossible to reach. If you use them to charge a cell phone, the backrest can easily crush the cell phone screen. In addition, wires tend to become entangled in the backrest. It would make much more sense to have the power points in the roof of the tent near the feet so that you can place items to be charged on the table. We ended up running a USB extension lead to this position. So let's summarize what is good about the tent. It is sturdy with less wind noise than our previous tent. You can attach an awning directly to the tent. There's the ability to carry loads on its roof. The side awning is very useful in rain. Both the side and the main awning can be rolled up out of the way, so deployment is optional. It arguably has the best telescopic ladder currently on the market. You can switch the internal roof light on and off remotely. It is pre-wired for solar panels. It uses sturdy Harrison connectors for providing power to the tent. The optional backrest makes sitting in the tent much more comfortable. The drop-down table is an absolute game-changer. And so the list goes on. However, there are also a number of things which can do with improvement. When the tent was originally designed, neither the backrest nor the drop-down table were options. These are excellent innovations but they have eaten into the available storage space when the tent is closed. So the storage space is now adequate rather than generous and a bit of extra space would be nice. Allocab used to offer their tents in a silver finish but this was discontinued in favor of an all black tent. The black tent gets extremely hot. After a day driving in the sun in the summer in Africa at times it got so hot that it literally burned my hand when touching it. Inside it was as hot as an oven and then paradoxically the excellent insulation works against you as it takes very long to cool down. The mounting points of the drop-down table should be increased and strengthened. 
the internal light switch is quite hard to find and should be more accessible. It would be nice if the internal light could switch from white to say red because that certainly helps with insects. The internal power points should be moved to a more convenient and accessible position. The doors should hinge at the top. While this list may sound long and negative, if you ask me whether I would buy the same tent again knowing what I know now, the answer would be yes. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Thank you for watching.